Jeff Zeta Schnur. Getting ready for a little bit of League of Legends action. We have NYU versus Stony Brook tonight. And that is a matchup that's been a little heated across some other esports. I think those two in CSGO kind of hate each other. So we'll see if a little bit of some rivalries brew in here tonight. Yeah, a word on the street is Stony Brook has uh, stepped on a few toes across CSGO. So um, don't know if that extends to other esports, as you said. But certainly a team that likes to, uh, at the very least, you know, spice things up a little bit, we should, we, we should say, right? Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this all does come down to. Now, thankfully today, we got the picks and bans ready. So we're going to go ahead and get that loaded up for you as quickly as we possibly can on your screen here. These two teams getting ready to go into it. It's going to be, for reference here, uh, Stony Brook over on the blue side and NYU starting on that red side today. Uh, purple side. For oh. those of you who have been around for forever and are very curmudgeonly and refuse to change their ways, much like myself. <laughs> anyway, into pick and ban phase we go. The first ban on the table, Xin Zhao, taken off. He is a super strong jungler in the current meta. So they don't want to let him have any purchase on the table. Evelyn, not usually known in 5v5 scenarios to be a very important pick, but C-squared's got quite a few games on. He is a very potent jungler. We'll see what else they want to take out. A little bit of a target ban there with Diana as well, but the Victor's just static strong top laner. I mean, he's so easy to play for how effective he is, and that means basically every champion, every team... And pick him up if they so choose but picking him up first pick isn't what you want to do if you're looking for something else so when they're hunting for that other first pick champion they're gonna ban out that victor try and make sure they can't get a second return pick on it and possibly pick apart the lovers duo in the zyra Khan. instead go for the camille actually probably flex into the jungle but the renekton instant response from mcjulia yeah the talia as well just to make sure that they do direct that Camille in case they don't want C-Squared picking up that in the jungle. So, going to force the Kha'Zix here, as that means Camille very likely in that uh, top lane, especially now that Kassadin's locked down, actually, for the middle lane. So, look at this. They're just picking right down in a little line here. Certainly. I mean, hey, if it ain't broke, you don't have to fix it, technically. So, okay. might as well get those picks and bans real quick through here. Take well. out the Poppy. Um... Yeah, Poppy is something it's, that we don't see a whole ton of in Collegiate, but when a Poppy pops off, spot. man, that's something very serious. So they do want to take it out of that one. It'll be answered with Swain. This is, of course, a meta of some funky bot lanes that we've seen at the Worlds. I mean, Victor, he's banned here lanes right too. now. But I mean, we, yeah, we saw Sneaky in the in the pro lane play and Victor uh, <laughs> in bot. So obviously that game didn't go well for him. Play it, though. Yeah, that's the real the real crux of the matter is. He played it and showed us why he's a top laner, right? It's because in the bottom lane, you don't have any siege. If you pick Victor, where's your siege? It's all gone. It's all left to the building. And that sometimes is the problem with Swain. But at the same time, he also has much more of a CC and forward facing kit. So you're allowed to dive through turrets. You can pull people. You can secure them. You can get the kills that you want. And that's fine. You know, sometimes you just have to do that. You just have to pick through it and it all works out. But... They have gone through the picks, and they've gone through the bands, and we have our two lineups. Zaya Brom in the bottom lane, certainly going to be a worthy contender for the Lucian, having such a high win rate currently, right? In D+, plus, he's sitting at somewhere near a 53% win rate on a 55% pick rate. Yikes. That's, that's, that's crazier than I would have guessed off the rip there, so... We'll see how that all... I mean, Lissandra's insane as well, right? She's nearing, a, I think, a 60% in people who have over 100 games with her. Um, the Talia's super strong. The Cassidy is massive. I think this is a game that will be decided through that top lane, right? If the junglers can affect the lane, if your top laner just starts snowballing, who can stop them, right? Nobody's touching the Renekton. They're not going to be like, oh yeah, we'll throw Kasten up there. No, Kasten gets one shot. Renekton starts twitching a little bit, and he spams his little uh, Tiamat, and then cancels some things, and all of a sudden he goes like this with his blade, and everybody dies. Yeah, right? no, absolutely. That's just such it's... a heavy pickup there. So we'll see as it does get ready to transition into game in just a few short seconds here. I do want to make sure we're all ready, rocking to go. And these teams... They're ready to just hop right onto the rift. 
Hop on they shall. And because they're hopping on the rift, it means we have to do our introduction. Right, absolutely. So to introduce you to these two teams, SBU and NYU over on that blue side, it is Stony Brook. That means ZZ Rot Portal in the top lane. C squared C in that jungle, probably just squared. Bacon tastes good, making an astute observation in the mid lane. Love and Lies in the bot there with that Lucian on AD carry and Minty coming in as the support. Meanwhile, over on the side of NYU, it is McJulia in that top lane. Dean King? Dean King, I want to say, in the jungle. Burton in the mid lane. Samalam 98 in that AD roll and NA6 rounding out as the support. You know what Burton reminds me of? It reminds me of Burton. Yeah, no, a player and, from uh, the last Quake season. If, if y'all didn't have a chance to check that out, absolutely go back, watch some of those VODs. It was a fantastic time, but we're here. We're in the League of Legends. It's the JV Seasons, and uh, we're bringing you some fantastic action. It should be explosive, to say the least, right? These two team compositions are tending very heavily towards early mid-game team fights. And besides the cast, right? We're going we're gonna to discount the cast for a sec. Besides the cast, none of these champions have power spikes later than like 18 minutes, right? 18 minutes is going to be an insane period of time. If the Kassadin does, eh, you know it's Kassadin, right? You don't want to lose. You don't want the Kassadin to just have a free chance to get into this game to win it for his team. So they're going to try and fight and end before he actually does come online. But we'll see if they're effective or if NYU uh, kind of falter, if they fall a bit. This Renekton, it's such a strange pick. It's such a niche pick. That's possible. ZZ Rot might not know how to deal with it, but it looks like he's handling it fine for right now. Getting some good trades in there with the auto weaving. Until Renekton gets three, his full combo really doesn't come out. And the Tiamat helps a bunch with that as well. So we'll see after first back if he can make a difference. Yeah, I'm expecting a lot of patience out of both of these two teams. And something that's a little trickier in a meta that can end games a lot quicker. We see kind of a different take on patience coming through in this game. Um, so, you know, it might be kind of quiet until you, the, throughout the first few minutes of laning phase, let everyone get to that level six. But after that, we kind of do tend to see an accelerated uh, pacing out of the game from there. So I'm interested to see kind of compositionally what everyone here is going to want to do because love and lies on this Lucian is one of the only players in this game I can really see just trying to put a lane on his back and just move right through and really start some of the snowballing of that game prior to, you know, the itemizations having the kills before the items. We'll see whether or not that does come true as the, as the game spills on here because right now, everyone across every lane is content to just sit here, trade out, take a couple little bit of health trades. Yeah, we might actually have a gank here. It is a double buffed up Kha'Zix, so it's squared coming in. He's going to be hopping right out of that one. That's the flash, but actually the red buff didn't tick it down either, so McJulia, as we cut away for just a brief second, almost went down, and the flash has burned, so that's not a good position for that Renekton in the top lane. I Very, very close gank, obviously, but the fact that he has no summoners, right, he's going to have to blow TP to get back to lane. Oh, yes, he has blown yeah. TP. He's back to lane now. No summoners whatsoever. And especially in the long lane, the Renekton does tend to suffer, but Talia's in the bot. Counter gank coming in. Minty will have this one in a lot of trouble. Is locked up, and Samalam finds the first blood. Is going to be a little bit dangerous Second now for blood. Love and Lies. He gets out by the skin of his teeth on a flash and just barely stays alive. But that's both summoners down now for the AD of Stony Brook, as well as a support flash. And that's a tricky situation to be in. So Dean King going to feel pretty good about himself there. Marks all the summoners just to make sure he knows what is off the table here. And I would not be surprised to see him return to the bot lane before too long. Yeah, and I think after getting so many summoners in the bottom lane, we know where the junglers are going to try to trend. The Kha'Zix, seeing that Talia bottom lane, he's going to take an advantage topside. He's going to take away those Krugs. Super important in terms of the overall XP gain that people get. So him stealing those away, right, from Dean King, means that they're going to have even more of an advantage, hopefully, in the jungle, right? He's trying to get an XP lead, then convert that back into something for the rest of his team, which is a gank mid. Yeah, he wants to come in. Burnton Ooh. should be right out there. Snipping right early, out. C-squared, yeah, yeah was, was a little... Uh... The problem was, the wave was so far up. Burnton came back off the wave, and there's no way for the casting to get in. He's not six. So without any way to pressure, without any way to force the Lissandra 
to stay, you know, respectful of the lane to try and get the CS, right? She can just walk in, walk out whenever she feels like. She can just walk backwards and walk backwards. She did walk straight into the Kha'Zix. A little bit of mistiming there. And uh, turns out to not work out so well for him. Yeah, certainly not the case. And they can taste good. Not going to need all the help in the world in this lane. Look at Burton here. He's out of mana. He's down 10 CS at only five minutes here. And it's not the best situation. So wouldn't actually be surprised to see Dean King lurking around in the side. Well, hey, Bacon Taste Good had the same thought. He dropped a ward there. He should be pretty well protected here. And this is going to be a big back to force Burnton because that teleport likely going to be coming out now from both sides. We'll see whether they do the gentleman's agreement to just walk it back or they'll both burn teleports to get in. But... Bacon tastes good. Now, if he wants to get back in the lane on time, we'll definitely have to make use of that teleport. Unless he wants to have C-squared hold it out, but that doesn't seem to be He doesn't really need to. So the thing is, the reason he doesn't need to is because of the wave position, right? He would need to TP back in the lane if he hadn't gotten such a good shove off of that. Oh. About every time I start to talk and break down a point, they go yeah, back to fighting. A little so scared. But no, it's it it fairly succinct. Them out. You, you, made it, you made it happen just like they made it happen here in the bottom <laughs> lane as Samalam picks up kill number two for the AD carry of NYU, and that's got to be a great feeling. They got the gank to get them started. Now they're and entirely they self-sufficient. down bot. I mean, this should be a very easy collapse if he sticks around. The Lucian has tried to piece quite far out, but he's... he looks like he is still going to get caught on this one. Just hugging the corners. Yeah, he's taking all the time he can. That's a teleport coming in. Bacon tastes good. Going to feel happy oh, no. he saved that one from last time. They're just buying time. As now, this could be the collapse, because C-squared is coming right on in. Burnt and not finding what he needs to on that hit. Looks like it's just going to be everyone diffusing right away. Wards around Dragon. A lot of vision, so I don't think that anyone's going to be going for any further objectives here. And everything will just defuse, even across the rest of the map, as that's going to be a back for McJulia in the top side, just to catch their breath. And everyone's going to shake it off. We almost had a pretty big fight on our hands, but I think a lot of props to NYU in this case. They knew that they could really pressure out uh, that kill. Um, they didn't overcommit, right? Just because you bring four members to the bottom lane doesn't mean that you need to come through and go all or nothing for this kill. And really wise of them to say, hey, you know what? Let's take a chill pill. We got Samalam the kill. We're still winning out uh, in, in uh, the bottom lane here. So let's just count our blessings and make sure we don't give up something that could damage us the rest of the map. Speaking of counting their blessings, they really do have quite a few small advantages, you know? Start to add them all up, and the gold lead appears magically from thin air. That's how math works, and uh, it's basically science at some point, but it's basically magic at another. Just like this magic is starting to happen in the top lane. Yeah, flash out from ZZ Rod. He'll get to the wall, chain out, feeling safe enough. McJulia didn't have the flash to follow that one. It was down by the skin of his teeth, but... He'll clear vision and just get back to this one. Feeling pretty good. You talked about that Tiamat earlier. He's got it completed. He's ahead as well with the boots. That's going to be something that's giving him a little bit of advantage. The CS, really the biggest thing right now. And this is the kind of damage he can do. He can just constantly get in. But look at that. Maybe not ready for the gank coming out. Dean King is in on the return. And he actually slays out. But it's just a trade. Both top laners dead. And now Battle of the good Jungles. Job. But yeah, Dean King... Maybe got to be careful. He does not want to be alone. He's shattered isolated. by this Kha'Zix, but the problem is committing into that uh, Talia is so risky, right? If you commit too far, you die. Everything's gone. You can't win. There's nothing that you can do to actually come back. But you don't commit. It's a one for one. You know, Kha'Zix is very happy to take that one for one trade. He got the kill. Doesn't matter who else got the kill, but he didn't die for it. Yeah, so now. Jungle is walking away with the kills. Yeah. So now maybe he's fine with that. He can just possibly take it a little bit slower try to just get away from it and uh move on with his extra gold but the Kassadin wants more so much aggression towards the Lissandra and he can do that like every eight seconds yeah insane pick up there just from bacon taste good it's costly on the mana but better to be low mana and have your enemy low health than the other way around so he's just keeping it really stacked up i'm admiring the pressure here and he's got himself a nice little cs lead he's up about 15 closing in on uh, i'm sorry no a uh, little more than that almost 30 now um and so it was 25 not 15 and, um but either way still just going to be stacking this one he'll back it off now run back to lane but great position to really start scaling into this mid game and that's maybe what the side of stony brook need they're down two kills not the biggest deal in the world especially considering it's only 
uh, six, seven hundred gold splitting them right about now, and no major objectives gone down yet, although both teams are starting to eye this ocean, Drake. Curious to see how it all transpires, because you can tell they're getting ready to make some moves on the side of SBU, and it might just start with Sam Lamb. The Ignite goes down. Love and Lies is there. They almost got Minty, but it just wasn't enough. Now McJulia maybe trying to find a little revenge in this top lane. Pops a stun, but doesn't get off anything further with it, so they will just back off. Take a nice little neck game in that bot side. Pat themselves on the back and reset. Yeah, and after they reset, you know, you realize the game is slowing down a bit. And sure, that benefits the Zaya. The Zaya is a fantastic later game carry. She does great damage. More trading in the top lane, but it's so hard for either of these fighters to get a kill that unless they actually start to blow ultimates, it's really, really not going to happen, right? They're going to trade constantly, but they're not low. You know, they were nearly full HP at the beginning of that. And because of it, they can't actually get kills. Nobody's at risk. So they just keep trading, keep farming and hopefully pressure one or another out of the lane so that they can ultimately get the real goal, which is the turret, and then the rest of the map pressure. Well, they'll take themselves an Ocean Drake here onto the side of the NYU. Feel pretty good about that one while maintaining really just about one kill's worth of gold in the lead here. Keeping the pressure up is Bacon Taste Good. Burton needing to be careful here. Not as much action around the mid lane as I would have thought with these two, especially the way that Bacon Taste Good has just been taking it to Burnt in there, but nothing has come to kill him yet. The problem is Talia can't kill him. It's post six casted, right? Talia walks in, that's it. You've walked in, casted in R's away. That's the real, real issue. The Talia can't gank the cast, and it's like trying to gank a LeBlanc, except unlike LeBlanc, who only has two dashes, cast in has basically infinite amounts of dashes. And they're not dashes, they're blinks. So her minefield doesn't trigger either. The main source of her damage doesn't trigger on uh, Kassadin's blink. So his movement is impenetrable for her. He has a lot of it, and that means he's hard to kill. Well, trying a little bit behind the tower might just give him a little bit of an advantage there. C squared coming in, maybe wanting to clean Ooh. up, and holy cow, what an amount of damage to take out Dean King there. Ties us all up at three kills apiece and inches the gold lead ever so slightly back into the hands now of Stony Brook. We'll see whether or not they can keep up this pressure here. As Tide's just been shifting into their favor little by little, and now with the Rift Herald here, that tower is not long for this world. They'll crack open the first one for themselves. Ultra Meanwhile, the top. yeah, it's a gank in the top side. Sorry, a dive in the top side as McJulia wants this, and now the teleport from the back. Bacon tastes good, makes it just look easy there. And that's a great pickup as now Stony Brook make a decisive series of plays that really put them in the lead. Yeah, it was kind of sitting on the fence for a while. You were waffling back and forth. Who's actually going to take the lead? Oh, another engagement in the bottom lane. They're still looking for fights. And this is why NYU, you know, kind of didn't fall behind for so long, right? They could find the fights. They could get some picks. They could get some purchase. Even if it took them a while, it still worked out in the end. But... Now that Stony Brook had the casted in online, a single item, he has tier, he has his TP, got another kill for the team. Things are looking pretty grim, right? Kasten is basically a one versus nine champion, and especially in the current meta, if you give him space and give him time and give him gold, he will absolutely carry the other team to victory. So what they have to do is they have to accelerate the game. And what you've got to say, okay, guys, stop stall. We have to just play. You have to go forward. You have to take the Talia, rotate across the map, use the macro play to win the side lanes, and then after the side lanes, take the objectives. After the objectives, take more objectives because you have more pressure. Eventually, it leads to a win. But as it stands right now, they not only lost first turret, but they lost their chance to punish the Kassadin, and he's reaping the rewards. 40 CS up, a kill up, and turret gold to boot. And... With as much of a great start as they had in the bottom lane, you might expect a little bit more of a focus on the Samalam here, because after Love and Lies kind of reset, they got that just clean 2v2 that gave him the kill onto that Zaya. You might expect a little bit more of a resource focus coming out from NYU onto, you know, what's easily their best and brightest shot in this game right now. It's really just been Samalam running down, staying very contained in the bottom lane, and letting the likes of Stony Brook really catch up everywhere else on this map. So I'm almost looking for Dean King here to make a little bit more action in the bot lane, make a little bit more trouble there, come around for those ganks and say, you know, hey, Burnton, 
You're not giving up deaths. Just chill. The Renekton, you know, his only death, McJulia, was, was pushing too far and trying to dive the turret there. Extending. There's a really clear path to victory in this game if you are New York University. And I don't think they're capitalizing on it as well as they could be. They want the 2v2, though. We'll see how this one pairs out as Minty's in some trouble. They whiff the Glacial Fissure, though, and Love and Lies does get hugeified. We'll see whether or not this continues out. It's a nice stun to start, and Sam Alam going to be in good position, but not with the Polymorph. That's a flash out as the Ignite is down. Bacon Taste good, ready to finish things off, and Minty gets the kill credit on the first one. Bacon Captain Taste still good. going. Trying to finish this one off. That is another gank possibly happening here in the top lane, but Dean King not ready for that. The isolation against Kha'Zix is just not what you're looking for at the end of the day. And it's another net game for Stony Brook because they're putting themselves in great position for this game. And it's such a strange way that they get there, right? You think, okay, the Talia's got to come bot. The Talia's got to come bot. They've got to do a four-man. They've got to get somebody down here because you know the cast is going. You have to match with Lissandra. Lissandra matches. Talia tries to one versus two top lane. They have no vision on the Kha'Zix. He's already waited in bushes once for one of your rotations. They can't be playing like that. That's greedy. That's how you get completely punished. And they are getting punished right now by a very confident SVU side. So if this keeps up, game number one is going to start to wrap up relatively soon. Yeah, this is the kind of thing we talked about too here is it's a slower start, but once you build momentum in this meta, it's just so easy to keep it moving your direction. And so... Would not be surprised to see that one continuing in the hands of Stony Brook right now. They played a fantastic mid game. The rotations are on just such a great level. And this is a prime example of that. Look at Bacon Taste Good here coming in. ZZ Rob Portal set it all up. Eventually knocked it down, but the damage from Cassidy and huge there. Both teams pinging this Infernal Drake coming up now. This looks to be in the favor of New York University, but. You know, down yeah, they've the top got, laner with no TP. This could turn into a 4v5 real quick. They've got a pretty good rotation. Um, the problem is, can they take the dragon, right? The answer is maybe. Um, they have enough damage to, that's for sure, but Kha'Zix is going in for the smite. He's going to get it too. Blue team does take that one away, and that is a bad time now for the likes of NYU. NA6 is down now. Bacon Taste Good will find that kill first off. Dean King. Splitting up, trying to fight, track down C-Square, but it's just not enough. And he'll fall down as well as Sal Sam Alam there taken out and away. Burnton trying to get out of that one with the juke. C-Squared, not fooled. And now ZZ rots right in onto his face. There's no getting out of this one. It is a four for zero unofficial ace as they did kill McJulia on the top side before that started. So every member now of New York University has died. The dragon has been taken away and they just continue to crack this game wide open on Stony Brook's side. Yeah, and then cracking this game open should be a very, very early Baron, right? 18 minutes as it currently stands. If they go to 20, this will be it. I mean, we're talking, they've got Illusion. He's fed. They've got Kha'Zix. He's huge as well. The Kassadin is even big. And their top laner, their split pusher in the Camille, is still doing work. So as they have currently stood with the rotations, everything is working out fine. What they need to do is they need to close this, right? They've gotten themselves a lead. They've gotten themselves turrets. You have to close the game up. To close the game out against this team, against the Lissandra deep push, against the Talia, fantastic at that. You definitely want the Baron buff. It'd be extremely beneficial. But to get the Baron buff without resistance, you need some kind of super minion or side lane pressure that prevents them from all rotating towards the Baron. Yeah, the to do that, been a little lackluster thus far. I mean, they okay. do have three, but for oh. this kind of lead, you got to look care. at the 2v1. Not care. Yeah, I know. Bacon Taste Good is ready to just keep this up. He might come away with the other kill. Burnton, you've tried that move three times. It hasn't worked once. And thankfully, by the skin of your teeth, the gate is there to get you out of this one. The team as well. Ooh, Cavalry has seven. arrived, and McJulia wants to find this one. NA6 is right there to get the Braum passive down as well. And the shutdown does come through, but it took three. Really four if you count Dean King as part of that when he did die as well. It's a rough little bit of a spot here for the likes of New York University still. They will take the moral victory kill on the bacon taste good. That's going to get a nice little bit of gold back into their pockets, but at what cost? I mean, at the cost of basically nothing. That was a free kill. Dean, right? King. Dean King died for it. Dean King died, but he's already dead. He's dead again, um, And he's way. dead again. Yeah. That's just not changing. C squared I'm, right I'm there, ready to rock and roll. Two seconds on this Baron, and you've just killed the enemy jungler. I think I might know 
what uh, Stony Brook's thinking here. Um, does it rhyme with Boo Darren? Cause uh, that's what they need to do. Just they might. Need to just, 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 just boo the heck out of him. He's not a very good guy, you know. Terrible dude. Uh, just likes likes kicking puppies in the afternoon. If you know any Darrens, they're not this guy. This is this is a different guy. This is a terrible dude. Don't worry about it. Um. We'll see whether or not they smack but, him around. I have, I have a feeling he'll get smacked around a little bit before this game's up. They but, do let it lapse but, in Dean King spawns, so. But they've got to do something. You know, you can't just... Okay, they're setting up for bot lane. So when they set up for a five-man bottom lane push here, this is to get all three turrets, get the inhibitor, and then have a pressure on the opposite side of the map so that the Baron goes down much more easily. It's like distracting um, a pet, right? So that you can actually feed the medicine. It's the exact same thing. All you have to do is put something in front of them and then just distract them. You know, a little sleight of hand, wave, go straight to the Baron, take the Baron. Once the Baron goes down, things will be much easier. But until then, this is still an incredibly hard push. They're going to have a very difficult time finding any kind of purchase against this team. Which begs the question, why are all five here then? Right? If you can't get the push, if you can't win the lane, they're trying to, but they're not able to. They're happy and that to means Renekton is going to ham on the turret. Yeah, they'll be happy to take this top lane turret for Renekton on the side of NYU. Still keeping the push alive. They finally sent ZZ Rot Portal back. But now with that, you gotta wonder if they're willing to engage this 4v4 under the tower. Because it looks like it's just a farm fest. And it actually is going to be better and better for the likes of NYU the longer that goes on. Unless the fight breaks out, which it certainly has here in A6. Docking a lot of damage with that Braum shield, but look at here, C-Square getting in. That's the first kill, the reset for the second. Third potentially coming in, the answer is Ooh, no, but Julia is it. there, and that's a flash out. But right now, it's a 2 for 0, and it's the damage dealers that are dead on the side of NYU. So they can just reset, wait for some minions, and really push this one out. Meanwhile, ZZ Rot in the top lane. Look, they had to pull McJulia back for that, so this is only going to get worse for NYU as it goes on. Dean King almost dead. Minty, can you know. make it happen? Oh, they're gonna they're absolutely gonna finish him off. There's no way the Kassan doesn't go in on this, I think. Unless he gets chased off with the Kha'Zix. That's the thing that they promised. Wanted. Eventually, Dean King would die yet again, and die he has. One more time though, cast in a little bit too far. And uh though bacon may be good, it is not impenetrable, it is not invulnerable, and so he has to respect that. Renekton for now. Ooh, speaking of respect, there's a little bit of disrespect coming out from ZZ Rot Portal, thinking he can take all three at once, but does get a kill out of it if anyway. He can. Flashing away and the teleport coming he down can. means he is going to get out of this one alive. And look at that. They cancel the TP to maintain pressure in the bot lane once they know he's out and safe. Insanely great macro play coming out from Stony Brook here. What Not a great macro play. The micro play. The way that he gets that kill, right? He leaps in one versus two. That's already ill-advised. The Braum passive instantly goes down to me. He says, okay, to cancel Braum passive stun, I'm going to auto attack, Q. Then cancel the auto attack with the ultimate, come back down, do the true damage, second proc of my Q, but it's the additional magic damage, and another auto. And that gets the kill, right? As soon as that happens, he Ws a way to get health and movement speed and to slow onto them. As soon as he spaces those two out, he throws the E, maximum possible range to clip the wall, and then flashes off the jump of it to get out. It was just brilliant, brilliant micro play that all came together there for the Camille. And uh, to use that again. Dean King finding his seventh death. Coincidentally, seven kills onto C squared here. And not all picture perfect matchups there, but has been what can just you say? really just rough for this Talia jungle, and it's something that over on the side of NYU, they opted for this in the first phase, right? This was their second pick, which, you know, you pick right alongside your first pick on red side. So, what a pick up. It's not been great for them thus far. NA6 is going to die as well. Love and Lies finds the credit for that one. As C-squared by the skin of his teeth picks off Samalam, the last oh remaining gosh. damage threat. And Nick Julia, nowhere to run, remember, nowhere to hide. You remember when we said Kasten is a 1 versus 9 champ? Mm. He He's, he's at that stage. He's at the 1 versus 9 stage. He has exactly two items, and that's apparently all that he needs to actually win a game by himself. The game is already wrapping up now. The first inhibitor is going to go down, and Stony Brook are going to look for their second inhibitor right after this convert into the top side. As soon as that happens, the game is over. 
Yeah, they didn't need the Baron to get any of this, in fact. The picks came naturally, they flowed freely, all of the blood was pouring throughout the streets, and they were just drinking. It's like daytime vampires, they're having a feast in there, but they're gonna try for more. The gold is their goal. Yeah, just look at that gold difference already. They want to find the Nexus, though. They don't care about anything else, but it is the shutdown coming out now as Dean King finds himself a much-needed redemption kill here, but there's still such a long way to go. But 40 seconds on ZZ Rock Portal, that may just be the shot across the bow that they need to keep the likes of Stony Brook in line here. They'd be pushing their luck if they continue it out further, but bacon tastes good. Just on the edge of that one is now going to have to create an escape plan here. C-squared is the escape plan as he gets in and just slays Burnt and McJulia now. This is what we talked about when we said it was dangerous for them to keep pushing. C-squared wants to find the bushwhack, but actually has to fly out of there himself. The bug is going to hop away, but he's in a lot of trouble if he cannot make this quick. There is the Weaver's Wall to shut things down, and that'll be yet another one. The third kill now for Dean King, and... Color me shocked. Is this going to be a barren play coming out of NYU? This is desperate times. I mean, it's a desperate take a measure. Look at their base. That's actually a teleport coming out by Camille yes, here, by is. the way. This is a really dangerous situation. They're getting back to him. They Next don't sure know it. Sure. They have no idea that this is happening right now because they're all so focused on the Baron. Love and Lives finds the first one. It's just Burnton who's coming back off the spawn that's going to try oh, to save this one. Baron too. This is really tough for them now. I think ZZ Rod's actually just going to be able to finish this game on the backdoor play. I can't believe they just pulled that one off, but the super minions are there. Burton has no damage, and that's going to be it. ZZ Rod Portal in 26 minutes and some change. Finishes off the game with a plum, 27 to 7. I mean, if anything, it was a decisive game. Um, I think beyond that, there's not much else to say. It was just, you have your Talia, she wins lane against the Renekton. That's fantastic. The Kassadin, somehow, by all odds, should like at least go you know, slightly below even, right? right? He doesn't have great wave clear in the early game. He doesn't have fantastic deep push. Lissandra just loses. And yeah. so when Lissandra's losing, and the Kassadin's winning, and the Camille's winning, and your Renekton's losing, what can you do that? right you're losing both solo lanes and then you have a bottom lane yeah I mean, uh, it's, it's just not it doesn't work in the current meta that's the real problem and then talia getting super far behind because the kha'zix just made the game even harder so as it stood i mean it just didn't work out for them they had an entire top half of the map that was behind and they're gonna need to change things up before game number two Right, well, with that, we're going to give the players just a little bit of time to reset mentally, get ready to hop right into this second game and run things down to the best of their ability here because we got a tall order set for us now with just how well Stony Brook came through and, and gave the smack down to NYU. So if they want to turn this one around, we'll see whether or not that's a possibility in game number two. We're going to give them a little bit of time first. Thanks for sticking around. We'll be right back. <laughs> 